What's up, good people? I'm just updating this uh, live event real quick, and we're good. What's up, friends? Welcome to another video. I'm Rob Stewart, and I'm here to help you get your skin and your overall health back on track. <clears throat> Excuse me. You guys know the deal. This is live number three, Ask Me Anything, Skin Health Focus Q&A. It looks like we already have some questions rolling in which is absolutely amazing. As you guys roll your questions in, I will answer them. Before I get going, just some technical stuff. Um, hope you guys are having a great weekend. Again, you can ask me anything. We're probably going to be focusing mostly on gut health and skin health. Chamomile tea is going to be helping us through the conversation today. And everything is in the description box that you need to know as far as offerings, one-on-one -on -one coaching, consultation, the three phases workbook, which will soon be an online course, and Skinessa, the best probiotic in the whole entire history of the world, is all in the description box. Click the links and you can get all the help you need. I am going to go right into the question. So NS says, what advice do you have for a 19-year-old university student who has eczema on and off? Thank you. Well, just the general, you know, foundational stuff. If you have eczema on and off, you got to focus on customizing your diet, which means you know exactly which foods work well for you, which foods do not work for you, and which foods are neutral. So that's kind of number one. Number two, you do have to do some basic level of gentle cleansing and detoxification, focusing on your filtration organs and your lymphatic system. That's skill number two. And number three, you've got to really optimize your lifestyle. So are you exercising enough? Are you exercising too much? Getting enough movement in a balanced way? How is your sleep patterns and your circadian rhythm? So those three basic things, your lifestyle, gentle cleansing, and customizing the diet, that's your foundational stuff. And if you master those three skills, uh, your skin's going to be amazing. And the uh, faster you master those skills, the easier the process is going to be. Obviously, that's a very challenging thing, but you guys can do it. So that's that's where to start, NS. Next question is from Nolkins. What top habits should I avoid at the start of my journey for clearing psoriasis? Okay, so basically he's asking which are the worst habits to uh, not do when you're trying to heal your skin. Um, you want to avoid taking the prescription drugs. That's very it, it really slows the process down. You want to wean yourself off all the steroid creams. Um, you want to not do symptom-based checking all the time, meaning you start to try to customize your diet and you look at the symptoms as your way of progressing. That's actually the opposite way of, of customizing the diet. That doesn't work. Um, so avoid doing that. Instead, focus on your biomarkers and biofeedback. Some other things to avoid is just your normal unhealthy stuff, um, partying too much, living an out-of-balance lifestyle, um, and not allowing yourself the time and space and nourishment you need to actually heal. So um, I don't tend to tell people what to avoid too much, but if you listen to the first question, which I think you are already tuned in, that's what to focus on. The foundational work, the basics, the, the, the bottom level stuff that everything else springboards off of. Okay, Bruno Assis. Hi, Rob. What's up, Bruno? Uh, what about the bacteria that lives in our skin? A probiotic cream can be a good idea. Hey, maybe, maybe not. Um, I haven't experimented too much with probiotic creams, but why don't you give it a try and report back to us? Uh, Elite 1984 is white rice bad. So this is a good place to jump in with this question. Um, for this Q&A, if you guys ask me about single foods all the time, um, I'm going to say customize the diet about 1 million times during this live event. So instead of doing that, um, I will say that if you give me some more background and details with your questions, specifically, I can get into more details with my answers. Um, generally, white rice is okay for some people and for other people, it doesn't work at all. You have to go through the process of customizing your diet to find that out. So it's kind of it's kind of hit or miss. But generally, when you're in the very start of your healing journey, I think it's good to avoid grains and rice and kind of have your carbohydrate intake come from cleaner sources like fruit. OK, Jude Mick 
Katame. I will struggle with your guys' name, so forgive me. What's up, Jude? Um, he says, hi, Rob. I've recently changed my diet to one of keto-based and customized, but I'm still experiencing farts hot and normal. Could this mean anything? It depends on how soon you switched your diet. So if the diet is a week or two new or a week or two old, your body's going through probably a big adjustment. So I wouldn't worry too much about biomarkers during a transitional phase. But um, it also depends on what you're eating. If you're eating foods that are making you bloated and have traditionally made you bloated, like beans or cabbage or whatever, um, you might try a different starting point with your new diet. Um, you really do have to just give it some time. And once the transition phase is over, then you can really start using the biomarkers to hone in. And, and that's a, a great way to do it. Excuse me. Asthma Ahmed, how do you solve bad odor? I also, also after enema, I smell bad even after cleaning. Um, well, there's a, a couple things. One, your body odor is going to be based on a couple different things. Your body's overall pH balance, um, your diet, the foods that you choose, the spices that you choose, your macros, um, how often you're cleaning yourself, um, and how often you move your body and how, you know, balanced your gut biome and your toxic levels are. The more toxic you are, the earlier in the stages of healing, you might have some funky smells come out of you that's somewhat normal. Um, but if you've been at it a while and you're really smelling strange, that's definitely a biomarker to pay attention to. And um, I would kind of look to see if you can balance those areas I just kind of talked about and, and see if you can adjust that. Um, Jer says, um, you said a diet of meat and fruit can work with carbs up to 300 grams. Is that not risky for dysbiosis? Um, it, it can be for some people, 300 with fruit only tends to actually work. Um, with grains and starches, 300 can be a little bit more risky. Um, also, anything less than 150 is definitely good to go. Um, so you do have to experiment. What he's asking about is the dysbiosis range is when you have a balanced amount of fat and you have a balanced amount of carbs, even if they're from good sources, many times that amount of fat and sugar in the same diet and the same gut is going to lead to some major issues. Um, dysbiosis being one of them, candida can be one of them. It's not a great place to be. But what we're finding um, is that that can be somewhat of a over, you can, we can overstep that or we can kind of hack that if we pick the right foods, meaning if we stick to the animal fats and proteins and we keep them relatively high and moderate and we fill out the carbohydrate intake with just fruit, it tends to work pretty good, even around a 300 gram or less range, which typically, like I said, with other foods, starches um, and kind of lower quality sugars tends to have issues, especially if your fats are coming from plants and other sources. So that's just been kind of a new thing that we're uncovering. It's going to be cool to see how that pans out for people. Um, as you guys have noticed with me, if you look at my What I Ate Today videos over the past three years, you're going to notice that I'm mostly eating fruit and meat and fats, animal fats, with a few other little things sprinkled in. And so this experiment with this kind of uh, fruit and meat thing has been going on for a while and it's working really good. I'm guessing because three reasons. One is that it gives you a great variety of nutrients. Number two, it takes away all of the possible plant toxic foods and a lot of the trigger foods and sets you at a starting place that's really easy to manage. And number three, um, it's really easy to manipulate macros and learn a lot about your macros because the sources of the food are so clean. So it gives a lot of biofeedback really quickly. Hope that answers your question. Rachel Johnson, can you take talk about Skinessa and why you like it? When you started taking it, did you see any changes? The reason I like Skinessa is because I've experimented with over probably at least 30 probiotics over the past 15 years. And Generally, I can feel certain shifts within my gut and in my skin that I just don't like. And Skinessa, the very first time I tried it, it actually, everything felt just really normal and good. There was no biomarker shift at all. And then experimenting with my clients and some of my close friends who were experimenting with it at the time all just had great feedback. And so it was just a snowball effect, a natural progression, you know, give it a try, pass 
test number one, test number two, and it is passed all tests with flying colors so far. So that's why Skinessa um, is what I recommend because it's just the only one that's passed the test and works. Um, when I find other ones, I will definitely let everyone know. I'm kind of slow with my research because I got to let things pan out for six to 18 months before I draw a conclusion. So it takes a while. Um, but yeah, that's why Skinessa works real good. GDF. Hey, Rob, I appreciate your opinion on black seed oil for seborrheic dermatitis. Thanks. So black seed oil, as far as eating it, is not real great. But black seed oil, as far as using it topically for your septum, can be really awesome. All of the natural oils, um, all of the natural animal fats, too, like tallow-based moisturizers that are very simple, one ingredient, just all natural, all work amazingly. Traditionally, jojoba oil, shea butter, coconut oil, safflower oil, um, I'm probably leaving a few out because I don't use them as much anymore, but those traditionally are ones to experiment with and can work really, really well. Um, 17 Kyle, what's up? He says, Rob, do you think labs and blood tests are useless or beneficial? Depends on the lab and depends on the test, but also they generally don't have a great track record healing people like us because they use a wrong methodology of understanding their data. So they use a symptomatic approach and they use um, uh, uh, basically a reductive, a redu reductive, <laughs> I can't speak. They, they use a typical type of scientific approach that really reduces things down to very small little things, reductionistic technique of science um, and I kind of use the opposite approach for what I do. I use a very holistic approach um, and um, I don't base things on symptoms. I've learned to base things off biomarkers and biofeedback. There are some blood tests that uh, like the IG tests that are just straight bogus. They don't give you really good information at all. So far, the stool test hasn't helped my clientele much at all. And some of the other more expensive blood tests and prick tests um, Generally, what happens is the, they just aren't really that detailed for actually compared to customizing the diet. So um, if it was me, I, don't, I wouldn't use any of this tests at all because they're expensive and they take time and they don't really have good black and white um, protocols that help with those answers. So it's easier just to customize your diet based on the biomarker system. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, getting a lot of questions here, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, this is our third one. It's Sunday. I hope you guys are having a good weekend. Um, we will continue to try to do these once a week. Sunday is looking like it's a better day for most people. Um, but anyway, just wanted to let you guys know. Tony James says, hi, Rob. I've been carnivore for four months and peeping, peeping three to four times at night is abnormal. You're peeing three to four times a night. Not normally, no. Um, a couple of things I check in with. One is, are you getting enough salt in your diet? Number two, how's your electrolytes in a holistic manner? Number three, uh, are you drinking a ton of water right before bed? What, when are you getting your water intake in? I tend to stop drinking water by seven o'clock at night, <clears throat> which I don't usually pee during the night at all. Um, so check in with those things and you might have your, uh, might have your answer. 369, hiya guys, what's up? 369, hiya. Ashley Ann, what is my favorite form of collagen? Uh, in the whole form from bone marrow and that sort of thing. I don't use any supplements or powders. Um, occasionally, I will play with gelatin. Um, as you guys might have seen, saw on my Instagram uh, a couple of days ago, I posted a little recipe that tastes like a custard ice cream with raw uh, full fat whipping cream, a little stevia and um, gelatin, it's bomb. So I like to get my collagen from the full source. All right, Jude McKinney, thanks man, you ready? Rachel Johnson, how does your clients typically do with chicken? I find it messes up my digestion, it doesn't work well for me. Well, Rachel, there's your answer. If it doesn't work well for your digestion and you're getting repeated biofeedback that it's not working for you, then chicken doesn't seem to be working with you. 
I think the one question I would ask you is how are you testing your chicken? Are you basically eating chicken only and that's it? Are you eating chicken with other things like salads or grains or other foods along with it? And if you're eating chicken with other things like beans or vegetables, the beans and vegetables might be the issue, not the chicken. So check in with those things. Um, GDF asks, uh, hey, Rob, I'd also like to appreciate your opinion on topical minoxidil Rogaine for beard use if you have seborrheic dermatitis. Thank you. Um, I don't really think anything uh, chemical-wise that you're being put on your scalp or your face while you're trying to heal is uh, a, probably a smart smart way to go. Um, you know, if you're if you're feeling like you're lacking in your beard department, you might want to focus slightly more on your fats, your cholesterol, your saturated fat and your hormones, because those are gonna be the things that are gonna drive hair, your, your hair growth, your nourishing hair growth the most. So um, I don't recommend Rogaine. Uh, Zen369 says, on the year you healed your skin, how often did you do the coffee enema? You know, the thing is, is that um, I think the year that I healed myself, um, I would say that I over cleansed and I detoxed. I was in an experimental phase and I have noticed with my clients, I've worked with over 1500 people um, and I cleanse with my clients way more gently than I did. I think um, once per week is great. A lot of times I think three enemas in one week is a lot. And I think you do have to take a gentle undulating approach with your cleansing. You have to go through phases where um, you're doing more nourishing with your food and exercise. And then as you're trying to create more autophagy, you're lower, lowering your caloric range. You're doing things like intermittent fasting, water fasting, more um, ice baths, more saunas, and then using things like uh, the liver gallbladder flush, um, salt flush, coffee enemas as a way to deepen autophagy. You want to do as little as you can get away with. And the undulating method that I'm speaking of is you have times where you focus on deep cleansing, maybe a week or two, a month at most, and then you spend equal amount of time or more time honing in the diet, honing in the lifestyle, nourishing yourself, and then just barely doing cleansing during that time on a deep way. It's all about allowing your body to go through a circadian rhythm that activates the autophagy parts of the day to the deepest level. And so it's foundational work that's going to do that. The, the more holistic things, the diet, the lifestyle, the exercise, all of this that you do, the easier it is for the body to go into deep states of cleansing and detox. Um, and undulating it helps it do that in the most non-backfiring um, way because you can mess yourself up. Over cleanse, if you over detox, um, you can go to a really bad place. You'll, you have malnourishment issues. You'll have digestive issues, hormonal issues. These are all things we're trying to avoid. So over cleansing won't make the process happen faster. It generally makes the process happen slower. Uh, E1 Smith says, hey, my psoriasis is caused by histamine and mast cell issues. What should I do? Um, your those those are not actually the root cause those are actually symptoms of the root cause so your psoriasis is caused by a genetic component combined with an autoimmune uh, issue that has been turned on by a number of different possibilities your gut biome your digestion stress levels just being a human in this toxic world once that gene is turned on what's happening is your skin is having an inflammatory response to your fight or flight and an out of control way. So basically your immune system's fighting itself. Um, what to do for it is the same thing I've been talking about this entire lecture so far as the basics, customized diet, cleansing and detox in a gentle manner, um, and allowing your lifestyle to allow the other two to work properly. And it's that, it's that straightforward for sure. It's not necessarily easy, but it's that straightforward. Uh, Sarah says, hi, I am fasting. Today is my fourth day. Is it normal to have pain on my gut? Thanks a lot, mate. Um, during a water fast, it's normal to feel like crap, especially if you've been doing it for a bunch of days. Um, you got to listen to your own body. And I generally tell people to water fast a lot less than, uh, than trying to go longer. So 
just be careful and blessing your body. Be safe. Be on the uh, conservative side. That's what I say. All right. Soren Mortensen. What's up, dude? Hi, Rob. I live in Greenland and the lack of sun and the cold weather could be a culprit uh, to me and heal my skin. My feet and ankles are very itchy. So if you are from the Nordic countries, your body has a built-in gene that upregulates the sun like a redhead does in much faster, much easier way. So as long as you have your saturated fat and your cholesterol where they need to be, even getting outside at all, you're going to be good to go, even in the winter where you live. Now, during the times of the year where it's dark most of the year, that's where you, when you're going to want to supplement it with like a UV treatment or a juve um, and, and just do your best when the sun is out to get underneath it for as long as you can. Optimize it. Do the best with what you got. That's really all that you can do. Roberto Gehinu says, it's possibly a stupid question. Hey, sometimes you got to take a risk, right? Um, are biomarkers and biofeedback the bad or good response of your body? They can be good or bad. So biomarkers and biofeedback are the signals that your bodies are giving. So your digestion, your sex drive, your strength, your stamina, your sleep, your mood, all of these things that your body does, how it actually works are your biomarkers and biofeedback. And they can't really lie. So if you have a crappy night's sleep, it's a bad biomarker. If your digestion is diarrhea for a week straight and you're bloated all day, then that digestion is a bad biofeedback, bad biomarker. Um, that's a bad response. So uh, the opposite is true as well. If you wake up in the morning, you have a perfect poop and you feel great. Those are great biomarkers. If you sleep all the way through the night, great biomarker. If you wake up and you have a morning wood and you feel very hormonal throughout the day, great biomarkers. So biomarkers are neutral. Um, how your body is producing them and what the biomarkers actually are is what's going to make it a positive or a negative. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Sam McGovern, what's up? What have been your closest calls with regard to relapsing to poor skin health? The vegan diet um, is the only thing. I was vegan for a long time and my biomarkers were dropping for a while. I couldn't do everything I was trying wasn't stopping them from dipping. If I would have stayed vegan, my skin health would have uh, definitely at some point gone in the tubes. Luckily, I made an adjustment and refinement in the nick of time and the gains came really fast and I've been on an upward uh, launch ever since. So that's it. I don't have close calls as far as eating bad foods or lifestyle choices because I enjoy my life. You know, like I have a very free life. I have a great career. I have a great family life. <clears throat> I get to do a lot of creative things. I like my work. Um, it's meaningful. And um, the food that I eat, I enjoy. I, I enjoy working out and moving my body and having adventures and optimizing circadian rhythm. It's not work. It's it's just finding your rhythm in life. And once you find it, it's actually really easy. So there isn't a lot of um, holding on because I'm afraid to relapse. The only thing was, was the vegan diet. Um, that was it. Raid 69. How far up are you supposed to go with the coffee enema? <laughs> Do you have a specific enema bag advice you recommend? Okay, so very personal question. Not too far, as little as you can. You only want to go, he's asking how far up your rectum do you stick the tube when you're doing an enema? That's the question and not too far. Um, the bags I recommend is, um, I like the stainless steel little barrel ones that have the, the nice clean, a uh, hard plastic skinny device that goes in you. That's my favorite one. I don't know its name. Um, that's the one I use. There's also the typical kind of uh, orange rubbery bag type of hot water bottle medical one. Works totally fine. Let's see. Omras 787. Why are you dodging my question? You thought on buying... Look, Omar, or Omra786, don't be so egotistical. Uh, I'm not dodging your question. The world doesn't revolve around you. Sorry if I, found, I sound kind of like a jerk, but give me a break. Um, there's 
tons of questions scrolling up and down. I'm doing my best. So I hope you guys appreciate it. Um, but getting my attention in that way is not going to make me go back and read your new question. So um, maybe a lesson in etiquette. I don't know. Hi, Rob. I thought I had healed my skin. This is from MJ. Hey, Rob. I thought I had healed my skin uh, when I went keto as I did not have any eczema symptoms for almost a year. However, as a late, my eczema came back and kept eating clean. Is this normal? No, it's not. That's not typically normal. But you do have sometimes people go into remission, which is different than, than healing. Um, the one thing I would say is, did you go through the full process of cleansing and detox um, and, and go through that whole process gently? And were you able to fully customize your diet? Or did you kind of get lucky and just go kind of keto and just general healthy keto did it for you? Because you might have um, built a different weird tolerance over the year. That happens from time to time. It sucks, um, but that that does happen. So, Ethan Love, what's your opinion on natural sugars and psoriasis? Um, natural sugars, I think he might be talking about like honey and maple syrup. Um, I tend to not really try to use any um, processed sugars at all. If I want something sweet, fruit is the best bet. Um, I will use stevia here and there. If I'm using a high fat, if I'm in a high fat phase and I don't want any any type of sugar, um, but I don't really recommend when you're trying to heal um, to be eating a lot of maple syrup or sugar or brown sugar or things like that. Um, <clears throat> yes. All right, great questions today, guys. Let me take a sip of my tea and uh, we will continue. I hope everyone's enjoying their weekend. Um, it's been a good weekend for me renovating my bathroom, which is fun. And I've been looking forward to talking to you guys. So here we go. Alexander Johanneson, and again, sorry about the butchering of your names. Um, what's your opinion about zinc bar soap? Uh, I think zinc bar soap is totally cool. There's a lot of good soaps out there these days compared to 10 years ago. Um, I stick to Bronner's because it works really well for me, but there's Tons of soaps out there that are eczema, psoriasis safe, um, that are that are great. So awesome. Uh, hey, Rod, here's a question from Hey Rod. Hey Rob, I usually do 24 to 36 hours fasting every weekend and I feel great, but my bowel movements the next day are always very loose and watery. Um, no other gut issues. Uh, is this normal and a good or a bad thing? How long have you been doing it? A month, two months, a year? Um, and... What is your diet like on those days that you're hitting those super long fasts? So basically he's doing a one full day water fasting and then eating the next day. If you're doing a full day water fast, um, your digestion is going to be the only thing your body's going to be pushing through you. Then the next day, if you eat a ketogenic or a high fat diet, um, it could make sense that it would be liquidy. But again, um, it's not the best sign to have diarrhea and liquidy poops. So I would say, um, you know, you want to see if you can, you can adjust that over. Uh, but that might be why. Carter Rosencrantz, I would recommend iodine topically for infection eczema. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. Uh, Harry Branch, have you had any clients who get elevated heart rate in response to eating all foods? Um, in response to eating all foods, elevated heart rate? No, I haven't dealt with that very much. Um, no. Allison Gambalon, why do the other YouTubers swear by the vegan diet, though? I find it so hard to change the diet. That's why. I'm, I don't know which YouTubers you're talking about. I, I am not someone who watches YouTube videos about diet. Um, their YouTube is really kind of a cesspool of information, to be honest. Um, I wouldn't put vegan YouTubers in the category of the most data-based or honest I uh, probably just stop there because I, I could rant about vegan morality and ethics um, and the skin health community. It's like, I'm not sure which vegan YouTubers that are in the skin health community you're talking about, but whether you're vegan or keto or carnivore, if anyone who says there's this diet will heal all people, they're pretty much their dietary philosophy is total crap. Um, so I guess my answer, Allison, is... Hey, you got to fill into your own 
path and narrative and perspective. And if, hey, the vegan thing makes sense to you, maybe you need to roll with that and see how it actually feels and works for you. Um, or go a different route. To me, I mean, I my path is was based on my own uh, my own health becoming really crappy. My partner's health health becoming crappy. Um, <clears throat> a whole story around uh, lost pregnancy that we had with that. And I've been in this industry for a decade, and a lot of my early clients were wanting to be vegan and plant based because I was at that time, and I saw the same cycles. So I can't speak for other YouTubers. Um, I know you have to take in your nourishment from YouTube with uh, good boundaries and perspective and a grain of salt. And also, I, I really am just sharing with people. I'm not sharing opinions or beliefs. I'm just sharing with people my experience and the data from my experience being healed for almost 10 years and the experience of my 1,500 plus clients. The, the things that work, the things that don't work, I just share the data in a transparent and raw way. And what the data says is that uh, the vegan diet is extremely hard to make work. Um, and yeah, that's, that's that. All right. MJ says the eczema patch that I have t turned white. I suspect it's the Tygo. Has this happened to any of your clients? Yes, it's happened. I had a lot of my uh, skin turn to weird hyperpigmentation for a block of time during the healing process, slightly after the healing process. For me, during the first year, all of that kind of mushed and faded all together. Um, my clients have had a similar path where they pretty much get their gut health and their, their skin health on point, but then the hyperpigmentation takes a little while afterwards to, um, to deal with, to deal with. Um, and so, um, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of something where most likely it'll either happen and heal while you're just healing everything else, or it could take a little longer. It's a crapshoot in a way. All right. Meta girl threes, any thoughts about ketovore diet? Um, as I was saying in the beginning, all diets are great, but you can't just go based on a ketovore diet. You have to customize your diet. So if you start as a ketovore, as a blueprint, Throughout the rest of your life, you're going to have to refine that diet and long term know exactly out of all the food groups, which ones work, which ones don't work and which ones are neutral. And it's not an elimination diet because it's not symptom based. Um, but Ketovore can work really great for a lot of people. Um, I go through Ketovore phases and I enjoy it immensely. Zen 369 Robo, I remember you posted a YouTube video saying you were testing with basmati rice. How did your body find rice in the end? My, I've been eating uh, rice from for 10 years, and my body can handle small amounts of rice pretty much no problem. Um, the testing with the basmati rice is a video series that will be out probably <clears> – <throat> it's done being shot. It just needs to be edited and kind of put together in the right way. But that experiment is done. It went good and very interesting. And I'll be sharing with you guys probably three or four videos from that uh, experiment in probably a month after the summer is over. So more to come about basmati rice. Let's see here. Tamia Dawkins. Uh, let's see. Do you have any clients doing the salt flush and or coffee enemas with heart issues? Any alternatives? Here's the thing about all of this is you have to do what's best for you and you shouldn't do any type of cleansing or detoxification or health rituals that make you have any type of fear or put yourself at risk even if it's just in your head if you have heart issues and in your mind in any way shape or form the coffee enema or the salt flush could affect you negatively then just don't do it at all focus on your diet focus on your lifestyle there's plenty of other things to do you can enhance your circadian rhythm and autophagy by doing things like fasting and all sorts of different stuff, which can really make your um, uh, heart health go through the roof anyway. So I wouldn't focus on uh, trying to push the limit with cleansing if you have a bad heart. All right. Rachel Johnson, I know you are a game for raw dairy if it works for one's diet. However, here in Canada, it's hard to find. Thoughts on dairy such as 
goat and sheep that isn't raw. Um, the only type of dairy that I would consume non-raw is butter, high quality grass fed butter, both from cows and from sheep and from goats um, and ghee. As long as it's grass fed and pasture raised, I'm good with butter, even if it's pasteurized. I prefer it raw, but I won't mess with regular dairy as far as creamer or milk, unless it's from a great source and it's raw. That's just how I, I roll with it. Matthew Rosinski, for example, is two hours of, L, of LISS training just as good as a HIIT workout, even if you don't break a sweat. Um, I'm not a fan of HIIT workouts. That's just not how I do it. I'm a fan of volume and being in rhythm with your circadian rhythm. So um, high intensity interval training um, depends on how your body handles it. Um, for me, it, it's, it's uh, not something that really makes me feel great. Um, I tend to do grease the groove method and a volume method for pretty much everything, my walking, my hiking, my cycling, my um, kind of daily health routine involving twists and hanging and squatting, and then my muscle building, which is full body workouts every single day, and the intensity goes up and down. So um, I don't think I answered your question, um, <laughs> but maybe you get the point. Look at webcams, chat.com. There's hot girls and boys with video chat. Thanks, webcams.chat.com. Thanks for letting us know that your porn site's up and running. Stoked for you. All right. Raid 69. Can healing be accomplished without cooked organ meats and raw parts? Yes, it can. Roberto Genu. Would you have any tips on healing intestinal candida? Thank you. Yes, I do. Take a good probiotic like Skinessa. Um, two, get your diet customized and focus on your macros. The easiest macro set to eliminate candida is with a very ketogenic, animal-based type of diet, along with some good cleansing and detoxification and the repopulation of your gut biome should do the trick. Candida is actually a lot easier to get rid of than you think. You just got to nourish and take away the need for the candida to be there, which is an overgrowth of too much sugar generally and too much fat in the diet at the same time, or just for some people, too much sugar. So cut down your sugar, get that fat up. Should be good. Okay, now. Let's see. Bontal, I think that's your name, Bontal Violet. Uh, which is the best way to deal with eczema flare-ups, especially on the arms? Um, very general question. I'm not sure what you're asking. Are you asking topically? Are you asking uh, how to heal it long term? Because um, I think that if the, the bo both of them are very generic answers, you have to customize your diet, gently cleanse and detox your system and addre address your lifestyle. And you got to use all natural treatments like oils and tallow on the surface of your skin so that you don't constantly put chemicals and toxify things from the outside in as well. So take a holistic approach, take your time, set the foundational work and you'll be good to go if you have a marathon approach. All right. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Jay Villani, have you tested clients for mold exposure? I've read that this can cause skin problems and other weird symptoms. Generally, the mold is going to only cause skin issues if the gene that you have is, is lit up and your inflammatory response is there. Um, yes, if you live in a moldy environment, it's going to be another puzzle piece that's going to add to the skin not being as healthy as it could be. Um, if you have a customized diet and everything else is on point and you're around a little bit of mold, Will the mold make your skin have skin disease? Most likely not. But again, you want to optimize your health in every possible way that you can and make the process as easy as possible. Um, all right. Let's see. Let's see. Soren Mortensen says, thanks, man, for your answer. No problem. He says, I have GAD anxiety disorder. Sorry to hear that. Anxiety disorders are challenging. Um, does... This affect the healing. After some video games, online games, I get really adrenaline filled and sometimes I flare. Okay, so um, 
there's definitely a link between anxiety and video games and anxiety and porn and masturbation and anxiety um, uh, and making the healing process more challenging for naturally anxious people. Um, you want to try to limit your exposure to things that are going to cause flare ups mentally because they will affect your nervous and immune system. If you're constantly in a place of fight or flight, that hormonal response is kicking all the time. It's the same response that we're trying to heal. Um, here's the thing though, that, but as you get better with your behaviors, the behaviors and your daily routines will affect how your body responds to anxiety. So as you play less video games and work out more, and as you get better sleep and do some of the healing practices like cold exposure and salt baths and these types of things, and as your diet hones in and you start to get healthy from the inside out with your hormones, all of these th things start to stack up. And then when stress actually hits you, it is a totally different beast. The way that your body deals with it mentally, physically, and emotionally is just different. So again, I'd say take a holistic approach and, and, and really focus on limiting those behaviors that cause anxiety and nourishing those behaviors that create hormonal health and stability in your life. And it'll be, it'll be nice. Um, MJ, what do you think about having raw garlic in the morning? I don't recommend raw garlic for the healing process. It hasn't tested well um, for my clientele. Um, that's just the data. Um, all right. Raid 69, for the coffee enema, does the coffee only go into the rectum or into the large intestine? It goes all the way up and comes out of your mouth. It's pretty wild. Um, no, it goes, it goes pretty far up into your intestines, I believe. Um, so sometimes you can feel it going further up than other times. Um, so also the longer you hold it in, the further up it travels. Okay. Um, Michael Austin, how much is your course and what all does it cover? Um, price is not determined yet. What all does it cover? It covers every single possible thing that you would need to heal. It's a six week course that covers everything from exactly how to cleanse and detox and customize that whole process, customizing the diet long term for the rest of your life. Um, it covers working out. It covers weekly movement sessions. It covers how to do all of the different steps as far as meditations and stress management it covers the mindset. It covers products. It covers everything from head to toe that I've learned over the last decade as a private coach and all of the tips and tricks and tools. I'm emptying out the entire toolbox that I have into this one. Um, it's gonna be a bomb course. It's gonna be all that you need. Um, it's a six week long, six week module course. Um, it's gonna be a game changer. Can't wait for you guys to get it. Should be out at the end of the month, um, hopefully. Dotting the I's and crossing the T's, doing all the legal, all that good stuff. Jay Villani, are pears and peaches a safe, low toxicity food? Generally, yes. Generally, fruit, especially pears and peaches, are, are good ones uh, for most people. All right, guys. Um, I'm not going to be going two hours today. I'm probably only going to be going over a little over an hour. So if you have questions, don't be shy. Get them in. Super chats are open, too. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to get to all of them. So if you have something that you're dying to, to ask, pump it through and we will talk. So Michael Lawson, also, I've noticed my skin issue started when I moved to drier climates. Hasn't really been the same since. That definitely happens, um, but it doesn't stay that way. For instance, I grew up in San Diego and hot, dry heat, especially like that when you get in your car and it's 100 degrees type of feeling, that used to really mess me up. I'd instantly flare up on my sternum and face and scalp and it'd be itchy and just so gnarly. I just wanted to rip my skin off. And I always thought like, I'm always going to be not able to be in deserty, dry, super hot summer environments. I just thought that's the way it is. Not, not the case once I healed. Once I healed, now I seek out all sorts of different extremely hot environments and it feels wonderful. There's none of that weird, itchy craziness. Um, so yes. All right. The Bengal Babu, what's up Bengali Babu? I don't get itch relief with salt baths, but I get relief applying dead sea Epsom salts directly on the skin. Awesome. Um, that's not bad at all. I, I wish it, uh, I wish it 
wash it off and after this has helps me limit my drying showers too. Um, so Bengali, cool. Good for you, man. You're finding your own path with it. Um, I think that that way works perfectly good. I've tried that several times. It's nice. Um, playing with salt and how much water to infuse into it and how your skin responds is, is a good practice. It's again, part of the customization process and you can really take that really far. Um, Jasmine Kramer, hearts to you too. Thank you. Um, hi from Germany. Zion, why is it that when I eat my sebderm flares for half an hour, then goes down again? Thanks for your advice. Most likely because uh, your inflammatory response is connected to your digestion. And every time you eat, your body's sending signals um, that it's time to send another inflammatory response because the fight or flight mechanism, the, the autonomic nervous system response is out of whack. Um, also, you might be eating trigger foods. Um, that are causing a kind of a chain reaction. All right. Let's see, Matthew Rosinski, how do you feel about farm salmon? Um, I think that wild fish and wild foods the best. Um, I've seen people eat a lot of farm salmon and be very healthy with it. So um, I, I always try to go for the wild stuff, but I don't think that farm salmon here and there is gonna hurt you. There's different ways of farming, different farming practices. You might be advised if you're gonna be eating farm fish on the reg to look at the farming practices and find one that links up with what you feel is best. Sis. Hello from Austria. Hello, hi from Australia, hello. Um, Gematrix, with, will caffeine every day for four years cause digestive problems? It depends on what your caffeine source is. Coffee, yes, coffee is a trigger food. Green tea, not so much. Um, yes. Jill Valani, what is your top strategy for managing stress? I deal with hot and uh, when I address stress. I deal with stress in a holistic way. I feel that stress always comes down to the person who's having the stress. And I'm not talking ish because I used to be a very stressed person too. But everything that you do in life is going to determine how stressed you are. Do you hate your job? Do you hate your lifestyle? Do you hate where you live? Do you not have a, a circle of friends that are very nice to you? Is your family life crappy? You have to put a lot of work in and kind of create all of this nourishment and all of these systems. Um, and, and stress is going to happen in life, but it's what type of stress you're willing to put up with and what type of stress you're not willing to put up with. Um, normal stress, like a little bit of traffic or challenging being at work or someone says something that hurts your feelings, normal stress, it's gonna happen. You can learn to deal with it when you're healthy in a very easy way. But the type of stress that is constant every day, like hating your job or hating your partner or being in an abusive relationship, those are the stresses that cause disease and cause major issues and can be avoided with a little bit of behavior modification. So I say optimize your power, become very anti-fragile and create an environment to live in that allows you to deal with stress, the proper type of stress in a positive way and eliminate the negative types of stress as much as you can. 369, can you heal your skin on a high fat animal based diet without eating grass fed beef? Um, you can. Again, it's more about customizing your diet rather than thinking that the carnivore diet or the ketovore diet will work. Those are good starting places and they may work for some people, but long term, you're going to want to know the entire plethora of foods that you can eat or not eat. All righty. The Bengali Babu, thank you. You're welcome. Wish you luck, my friend. Zion, can eating too much fat and oil such as olive oil, ghee, butter, have drawbacks as now I have paranoid. Uh, so I wouldn't eat a lot of olive oil. I wouldn't eat any vegetable oils in large amounts at all. Um, they can cause problems for sure. Uh, you might be asking me, will a high fat diet work perfect for you? And I can't answer that. You have to answer that by testing your high fat diet with your biofeedback and biomarkers in a systematic way. And then just simply determine from data, okay, high fat keto doesn't work for me. Change your macros, make a refinement and test that out until you find your sweet spot. 
All you can do is customize the diet long term. All you can do is um, listen to the data and biofeedback in an honest way and try your best to make refinements that make sense and aren't too hasty. Um, small adjustments, long, long term biomarker feedback will do the trick. Okay. Bueno, Assis, do you hear a lot of music? What do you like? I do hear a lot of music. I am someone who um, I've played in bands. I've DJed. I've produced music in my past. Music's a big part of my life. When I got my advanced certification as a yoga therapist after uh, or before I got my behavioral science degree, my focus was somatic movement, which is has incorporates a lot of music and melody and dance and 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 so i love a lot of different types of music um pretty much every genre i enjoy i like music that you can dance to um i i like some heavy music i like pretty much i know it's a cliche answer but i really do like every genre um and my family is a family that i grew up i have two older sisters two parents we all grew up we're tight-knit and we grew up listening to things like Rod Stewart. I know that's funny, right? Um, Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, Motown, R&B, um, anything that you can dance to, my family always had on. So yeah, music's a big part of my life. Um, I always have, I have turntables and mixers and guitars laying around all the time and uh, like to jam around for fun. It's just a hobby these days, but music is wonderful. Uh, 17 Kyle one, how do you deal with dehydration on low carb diets despite drinking plenty of water? Um, I would say that if you're having dehydration, um, it's hard to be dehydrated if you're drinking enough water, if your electrolyte levels are where they need to be. So you most likely just need to tweak your electrolyte levels and your macros and you might be good. Um, if you're, if you're asking me personally how I deal with it, I, I don't deal with it. When I'm high fat, I don't get dehydrated at all. Um, so Jasmine Kremer, thank you for your work. I love your videos so much. Thank you, Jasmine. That's very nice of you. Appreciate your feedback. I do this for you guys. Um, I've been in your shoes. I suffered for most of my life, and I know what it's like to have debilitating skin disease. My goal from – this channel, from the course I've created, from my private work, from the ebooks, is so that you guys at least, at the very least, have a light at the end of the tunnel. And if you take it a step further, my mission statement is to create a step by step process that everyone can follow that works. And I'm, I'm getting there. And so I appreciate you guys, appreciate the community. It's been a decade in the making. And so, um, that's why I do what I do. So I appreciate your feedback. These lives have been great. Um, and we're hitting the 53 minute mark. So I'm probably only going to go for 10 to 20 minutes more at most. So um, get your questions in uh, if you have them. All right. Law abiding citizen. Why is croissants? A trigger food typically wires, but typically a croissant has uh, sugar, really low quality dairy. Um, it's got probably oils in it. It's probably got all sorts of white flour. So it's, it's just a lot of crappy processed foods. For me, I think you might be referring to my video where I ate a bunch of um, my old trigger foods. And I don't know why for me, but every time I used to eat a croissant, it did something to me pretty much right away. So that's why in the video from a few months ago where I ate all of my trigger foods and just to show you guys that nothing would really happen, um, I ate a croissant. So Zen369, what was the biggest and most important thing you had to change about yourself when healing your skin? Um, the biggest thing that I had to do was two things. One, I had to stop trying to make the process of life and healing happen fast. That is the biggest cycle of not getting anywhere for me. Once I just committed to the solution 
and really erased the timeline and just said, I'm doing this and this only indefinitely and just full heartedly drew a line in the sand and committed. That was a big, big moment for me. Um, number two, somewhere early in the path, I did figure out that along with that commitment and long-term kind of marathon approach that when you're consistent with your behaviors, they're actually get really easy. And if you just keep consistently stacking, learning about your diet and cleansing and, and working out more and moving more, it becomes this lifestyle that's really easy that builds all this momentum. And now 10 years later, I look back at kind of my life now and where I was. And it's like, I almost am like, God, I was pathetic. Um, but I wasn't, I was just lost. And that's where most people are. No matter if you're starting here, here, or here, there's always more to learn. I'm just still a student. And so it's about that commitment, first of all, and then the consistency. And from those two things, if you follow the basic path of customizing the diet, cleansing, and lifestyle management, and you do those two things, they make all the difference. For me, what that led to was freedom because, and I've told this story many times, midway through my healing year, I kind of lost the who cares about my skin. I was like, I'm feeling so damn good. And I can see, I can see what this is going to turn into long-term as far as my new behaviors and just how I feel that the skin health stopped being such a dramatic focus. And I think that that's another reason why emotionally and stress-wise I was able to heal is because I stopped really worrying so much and caring so much about the flare-ups and will I heal and when will I heal and all of these monkey mind questions that were constantly stressing me through the commitment and consistency one day it just kind of dissolved and that was a thing that made um, the healing process a lot easier. Okay, next question. Yeah, here's a good one. Jared uh, Derbas, any tips for long-term consistency with the diet and everything? Yes. The number one factor is you have to make it taste good and you have to make it fun and you have to have wiggle room so that you can have the ability to have delicious meals and eat what you want. What do I mean by that? Well, I know exactly what foods to eat and what foods to avoid. So I know that I can have raw cream whenever I want. It works for me. Raw cream with the little strawberries and some crushed ice and stevia is pretty much a delicious ice cream. So would ice cream be a cheat food for me if I made it that way? No, it's not a cheat meal. So I could presumably eat that ice cream every single day of the week and it's only going to help my skin get healthier. So once you make it taste really good and once you start to make the lifestyle uniquely yours and enhance your life instead of being something that you have to do, then it gets really easy. So you make it easy to be consistent and it takes a little bit of time to learn. And sometimes people aren't consistent because they just haven't gotten back on the train enough. So even when you're consistent, you're going to want to give up. You're going to have hard times. You might, might even fall off the bandwagon here and there. But the person who's consistent over a 10 year span has fallen down and gotten up a million times. I know I have. It's not just this linear progression. Um, so really allowing yourself to just be in the moment and in the battle and be real. If you're struggling, struggle through it and get through it. Just try to get back to the, the foundational work all the time and, and put your energy into that and you'll be good. It, it, it'll be once you get over the hump, you'll be good. Tune says, I have scalp flakes, extreme dandruff since two years, and I can't seem to get rid of it. Any ideas? Yes. Uh, you have to customize your diet. You guys can answer this for me at this point. You know, customize your diet. Do gentle cleansing and detoxification and address your lifestyle so that you can naturally heal your skin from the inside out and keep it that way for the rest of your life, uh, just like all the other forms of skin disease. Hua, tea time. Give me a break here for a second, my friends. Ori Billing. 
It says, would you have gone keto right away if you know what you know now? I would have customized my diet in a different way. <clears throat> I would never have gone vegan if I know what I know now. I think with my body type and seeing how my biomarker and biofeedback shifted when I started eating animal foods in the right way, I think I probably would have healed my skin in six months rather than a year, but eh, who knows? But yes, I would never have done it <laughs> the way that I did it. Um, I made it extremely hard. Luckily, it gave me a ton of data and information to share and made me really good at what I do because I had to struggle through the hardest diet to customize. Um, so, yes, I would have done it very different. Um, ABC, ABC, is celery juice really effective? It's really effective for some people and it's really ineffective for other people. It is a food you have to customize and test. It has great effects for some people. It does neutral effects for some other people and for some people, it, it messes them up big time. So um, Afro, fun, Afro Fund Music, thoughts on garlic. Answered this earlier. I would avoid garlic, um, especially wild garlic. Awesome, Rob. Thanks for your advice. You're welcome, Jared. All right. Let's see. Lexi G, does waking up every day at the same time improve your skin health? Personally, seen improvement for myself. Um, waking up on a pretty set schedule will improve your circadian rhythm An improved circadian rhythm will improve every aspect of your health, your hormonal health, your stress management, your gut biome, everything, 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 everything. So yes, um, it can help drastically. You're welcome guys. NS, can celery juice cleanse and detox? No, not really. Food doesn't really cleanse or detox you. You're, you can use food and different leverages and techniques with food and timing of food to elicit more autophagy, but food doesn't necessarily go into your body, grab toxins, and leave. It kind of does in certain ways. Fat can bind to toxins really easy. Um, you can have some digestional cleansing from foods. But in the way that people are talking about it on a cellular level, when you drink celery juice, it's not going into your, your cells and cleaning them out, and detoxing them. So Zen369, how much would you say your mindset plays in healing your skin? Could you give me an example of 40% diet lifestyle? So I think the problem is you're separating the mindset from the diet, from everything else. It's a reductive issue, reductive reductionistic, reductive, I can't say this word today, reductive, it, whatever, I can't say the word, I'm going to give up, reducing the body down to 40% this and 80% this and 20% that creates issues, so your mindset is going to affect every other aspect of your healing, so if your perspective sucks and your mindset sucks and you don't deal with stress, then how likely are you going to be able to have enough energy to eat the foods that you're supposed to eat in the beginning? probably won't. So you could say that mindset affects it 100%. Um, but I think the question is that you're asking maybe is, is when you are eating clean and you're doing everything that you can, and maybe you're still having some stress in your life, can you heal? And yes, you can definitely heal. Stress is part of life, but your mindset and perspective um, are definitely um, not something to separate from everything else. They're, they're holistically a part of the conversation. Uh, Spencer Taylor, do you lift weights regularly? Yes, every day. Um, the best exercises are the big multi-joint ones, pull-ups, squats, deadlifts, overhead press, push-ups, ring dips, dips, um, lunges, rows, horizontal rows, curls, things like that, the basics. The basics work really well. Um, and that's all I really do is I do – all the basics every day in different ranges of intensity. Some workouts are more recovery workouts. Some are more um, for the purpose of explosive heart health and plyometrics and other for autophagy and just fun pumps. So I, I mix it up. Tony Montana, the smoking weed helps to decrease stress levels. It depends on who you are. And again, it's looking at it in a holistic way. If you smoke weed, 
and then you feel less stressed, then yes, your stress levels are reduced. But then if you binge on crappy cheat foods, your stress levels just went through the roof. And if you smoke weed and you're the type of person that gets lazy, well, then you're going to be stressed later on in life, later on in the day when you actually have to do what you were supposed to be doing. So we can both be very healthy or very unhealthy. Um, and how you ingest the weed can cause issues. Edibles with sugar and crappy ingredients can cause major, major issues. Um, low quality smoking devices that irritate the esophagus and the lungs can cause major issues. THC in general, CBD in general are fine as long as you're taking them in in a clean way and you can operate your system correctly when you use them, meaning you don't go off the deep end and have the munchies constantly and you don't, it doesn't lead you to nonstop video games or just not being a healthy person. I got you 369. You're using the um, percentages as an example. Totally understand. I took it as an opportunity to kind of hit a bigger subject of a lot of people, um, you know, they try to quantify the healing process and it, they feel like the more information and the more reductionistic approach that they have to that information will really help them. And I haven't found that to be the case. Anna Barrero, um, raw cacao, really bad. Cacao is a trigger food major. Um, it can trigger acne, can trigger psoriasis. It's just not a good, good healthy food. What do you think about Dupixent? Okay, Dupixent is one of the worst drugs. There are no good pharmaceutical drugs. There are no pharmaceutical drugs that can heal eczema, dermatitis, or psoriasis. All they do is mask the symptom and create more problems long term. So Dupixent, Humira, um, all the steroid creams, all of the all of the new pills that are coming out, they make the root issue way worse, and um, they're really bad. They're really bad for your overall health. Spencer Taylor, do you ground often? Yeah, I go barefoot outside daily, even in the winter. Um, it's fun. It feels great. The Bengali Babu, I hear sun is good for eczema skin. How much sunlight do you, so sun, for sun to work well, you need some precursors. So you need saturated fat and you need cholesterol from animal fats to really make the sun work at its highest level for producing vitamin D and that vitamin D hormonal response. I prefer for me the non-issue, you don't want to get burnt, but you want to get sun-kissed volume lots of sun over a long period of time in gentle way. So in the morning time and in the late afternoon, you're pretty good to go. Um, during the middle of the day, if I'm outside, I usually have a big cowboy hat on or a wide brim hat um, and I cover up um, because I'm not trying to get burnt. Again, it's about getting gently kissed by the sun and by nature every day, um, but not overdoing it. Jack, does activated charcoal affect good gut bacteria over time? It depends on how you use it. Um, you can use it, and for some people, acutely, if you use it for a short period of time, it can do some extra help with cleaning out and cl cleansing and detoxing and leading to more autophagy in the gut. Um, I think that you can overdo it for sure if you're taking it every single day, ingesting it. It could probably wear out your gut biome um, over time. Serene Mortensen, I saw a video about grounding. Does it work on rocks too? Where I live, anywhere you can connect with nature is going to be good to go. Rocks, dirt, trees, the beach, sand. Um, I just spilled my tea. I'm going to take a sip. So I, I, I'm going a little longer than I thought I was today. I'll keep going. Um, what do you think about Gary Lake, what do you think about vitamin supplements? I don't find any need for them when the diet is on point. ABC, ABC, what do you think is the best way to stop craving junk food that stops the healing process? 
So when you customize your diet and finding that neutral wiggle room, if you make your diet work long term, it means you made your diet taste good. If your diet tastes good, you're not going to have cravings. Also, cravings many times you can check my short. I put out a, a YouTube short yesterday that's talking about this topic. Generally, sugar cravings, they come from a couple different places. One, you need some sugar. So eat some fruit. Number two, you might not be having enough calories daily, so your body's going into starvation mode, and it's going to reach for the most calorically dense, delicious foods it can possibly get its hands on. Think of nature, honey. Boom, give me that honey. You eat a little bit of honey, and you got a ton of calories. Number three, your macros are not personalized and customized for you, meaning you need more carbs in your diet or you need less carbs in your diet. You're not getting the nutrients and nourishment you need throughout the day and what does that lead to sugar craving so check out the video i go into a little more depth but that's the that's the general um tony montana your opinion about chinese medicine so i think you might be asking about chinese medicine in terms of healing the skin not great don't have a great track record with healing the skin um aspects of chinese medicine are absolutely wonderful um, acupuncture I think that's what you're alluding to it's a great practice but without customizing the diet gently cleansing and adjusting the lifestyle, acupuncture won't, won't do anything. Alina, are Epsom salt baths effective? If so, how often should we bathe? Yes, they're really effective. They're really great. Epsom salt baths, dead sea salt baths, oatmeal baths, cold baths are all highly effective ways to soothe the skin, even pH balance the skin, add some electrolytes to the skin, detoxify the body, help with autophagy, relax the body. It's a good good practice. Um, you can do them a few times per week, sometimes in streaks every single day. Depends on you. How much does it dry you out? Are you moisturizing enough afterwards? Um, so, you know, just check in with your biofeedback and adjust accordingly. Rachel Johnson, any tips on how to help swollen lymph nodes? Again, with the swollen lymph nodes, those are going to start to reduce when your body's overall inflammatory response is starting to go down systemically, um, meaning once you're consistent long enough with dropping those bad biomarkers and getting that inflammation down a little bit, the lymph nodes generally just chill out and relax on their own. So Zen369 asks, for healing the skin, which is more important, hot baths or cold baths? If I had, they're both important and they're both good tools, but if I had to only pick one or the other, um, I would probably do the cold exposure baths. Why? Because you can clean yourself in them and they improve autophagy and the autonomic nervous system inflammatory response, fight or flight. So um, they cover everything. Um, so they're both great though. I, I mean, if I had a gun to my head and had to pick one or the other, it'd be cold, but they're both great. All right, you guys, so I'm going to end the party right there. This will be replayed on YouTube right away. And um, I will go back and uh, if I miss any questions, I'll try to cover them next time. We'll probably be doing the next um, live next Sunday after Nebraska beats Illinois on Saturday. can't believe it's college football season. Um, come ready with your questions. All of my offerings are down in the description box, as you guys know. Um, and much love. I'll be back with many more videos really soon. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one, guys. Bye.